Today, I want us to sneak and invite ourselves to a discussion that is going on between an employer and an employee. Personally, I am a beekeeper. I keep bees and I harvest honey, I eat, and I share the others through several outlets with yourselves. So I'm a beekeeper, and calling me to come and speak here by definition of a farmer and on the branch of beekeeping, you do not expect my message to fall far away from farming. <laughs> because that is what I do. So today you've got a farmer in front of you. But now there is one farmer who is in discussing something with his employee who is a shepherd. And I want us to sneak quietly and go and listen to what they are discussing, the two of them. This farmer, and a great wealthy guy, is found in Genesis chapter 30. And I have to warn you that it is going to be slightly long, long text of 11 verses because I know you would want them to be quick, and, but now today we are listening to a discussion. I've told you we are inviting ourselves, okay? So let's go to Genesis chapter 30 and verse 25, and we'll go all the way to verse 36. And let's see these two men who are having a very important meeting. After Rachel gave birth to Joseph, you, did you pick that word? After. So there's something before. And there could be a lot of things before. But after she gave birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban. Now the discussion starts. Si tunaenda kwa hiyo mkutano? Tunasikiza wakiongea pale wote wawili. Send me on my way. Jacob, there is something he has achieved. They got a son. Send me on my way so I can go back to my own homeland. Give me my wives. He has something. He has what? He has wives. And children. That is all what this man has. For whom I have served you, he has worked for them. It's not for free. He has worked for them. And this, as we are going through, this message is not new to you from Sunday school to today. What does Jacob have today? He got wives and he got children. And he has worked for them. And I will be on my way. You know how much work I have done for you. He is reminding Laban. I told you we, we, are, we are listening to them. They are somewhere sitting and we are listening to them discussing. And he goes, but Laban said to him, if I found favor in your eyes, please stay. You see, that is a typical employer. Usiende ka hapa. Stay. And you guys have been in such kind of a discussion with your employers. Ka, sasa ni nini? You've been with me. See you too, I have learned by divination. Iyo hata tuta ingia. Lakini amesoma through what? Divination. That the Lord has blessed me because of you. Did you see that your employer, when you joined him, the few flocks he had? And how much he had when you were leaving him? That is your part. You know, I'm talking to you assuming that um, I, the son I told you is in form for once, once in a while when you are sitting by the fireplace. We do fire at night every night. They all say, you know what? Let me hold this so that I keep you waiting until I say the right time because he keeps reminding me a few things and I need to do. Now, through divination, he has realized that he, it is the Lord 
who has blessed him because of Jacob. And then this is what Laban speaks. There's some discussion going on behind there. He says, name your wenches. Sasa hapo ndiyo inakuanga maneno. Utaki mfanyikazi yaende? Na unataka akaya na wewe. Asiondoke. Because you've learned by divination that this worker has made you who you are. So, uh, so that I don't keep you waiting what my son tells me, he tells me. You know that, eh? Huko munaendanga hiyo kanisa hiyo. Najua tumekua hapa, kutoka ikue. Ilikuwa mambati yama mbao. Remind me, I forgot. Mbao. Yeah. Kwa hivyo, you did not even need to be inside. Sauti ilikuwa inatoka tu, and it was okay. Hata ukichelewa. This is where we can. <laughs> I've been with her since 2002. We married at Deliverance Church, yeah, Thika. And then we, I was transferred to come and work around here. So when my son speaks, he was born here. I stayed outside the church all the days when he was in Sunday school. Nilikuwa tunaenda na keti hapo na ye, a keti hapo asitoke. Unanjua wanatokanga wakienda choo mbure tu. Akaya hapo na kirud na muliza mbona umetoka saai until now he is in form 4. The other one is also getting done. So he always tells me, unanjua huko munaandanga? Huko... Main campus. This is called main campus. Now that is like Senate. And here in Shiloh, it's like Parliament. So when I'm talking to you here, I'm speaking to people who have had experience of life. They have had workers. These are the, you know, our what we have to ile kiwango ya, maybe, is it third floor? I'm a fourth floor kuendeleanga. So these are the people, people who have an experience like Laban. A very great angle, and I'll tell you why he is a great man. So, um, and I have worked for you. So he said, name your wages, and I will pay them. Umewana? Kuna siku kama hizo zinafikanga wa kikila mtu. That I will pay. Usiende, whatever you want. Tumekaa na wewe kwa muda murefu. Tafadhali usiende. And something happens in verse 31. Pio ingine tu nitaruka. Jacob tells me, do not give me anything. Umawe mbewa na mfanyikazi na muna iyo? Sine makuambia si sasa hii ni senate, ni wale walifanya parliament waka. And now they are in senate. And I was told by somebody else. Umawe mbewa na mfanyikazi hivo? The best worker you like. Pengine dia napikanga chapati mzuri kuliko hile wawe unapika. Na hakiwa nyumbani, you are sure everything is okay. Ame kuambia, sasa ni achilie. I want to go. That I may do something. You know, he goes down there and says, that I may do something for my own household. Ni achilie. Remember, this is an employer who is also an uncle. And now a father-in-law. He kazi it's in mingi. But nothing for free he got from his uncle as an employer. He worked for everything. Lamban is a businessman. Yeah? He worked for everything. Atam, Bibizake, he worked for them. He worked for everything that he worked for. That he owned. And then he says, do not give me anything. Situko hapo kando tukisikisa wakiongea. That, sema chenye unataka. Ata ukitaka nini, I'll give you. I'll give you part of... Please don't go. Stay with me. But then, when we go on with that verse, he says, somehow Jacob relents and says, but if you will do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today, not tomorrow, today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and every spotted and speckled goat, goats and lambs. Unanjua tofauti a goat and a lamb? You know the difference? Because, you know, we come from a tradition that uh, we have uh, goats and sheep, and some people call uh, them the same name. So there is a difference between lambs, between sheep and goats. 
and every spotted or speckled god, they will be my wenches. They were few, they were not many when he was making that choice. Among us, Laban's had. So it was very easy for Laban to accept that call. There is, I will tell you, why you may worry why I'm not reading from the, from the screens is because, you know, my Bible, Nizile Muse, Nime underline, Nazile point, Ziko. Sunona. So that's why I go that. That, that will be my wages. Laban Yalikua Mekalia Mushara, Unjama, every time, for 10 times, as you read in chapter that one. Akiwa Mwangeze Mushara. Jacob Mechomeka Mfanyikazi Wake Field for all those years, and he has never earned his salary. And even every goat, every lamb that God lost in the field, Jacob paid for it. Things that you guys do every time to your workers. Umevunja i. Hmm? Wenji umevunja ile nglasi yangu. Ukumbuke mwisho wa mwezi. Unaona yu maneno? They will be my wenges. And, by, and my honesty, he's still a honesty guy, will testify for me in future. Whenever you check on the wages you have paid me today. In my possession, that is not speckled or spotted or lamp that, or, or any lamp, and that is not dark colored, you will consider that I have stolen from you. Which were speckled and spotted. What does the great man say? The great angle. He says one word that covers everything else after this. Because he has now an opportunity to continue working with his worker and his faithful servant. He says, agreed. I think if you give me new international version, kuna hiyo word nataka kuona say agreed. This looks like the end of the discussion. These people have concluded the discussion. He has asked what he wanted to get, and then he has gotten what he wanted to do. At least he has a worker to continue. He never bothered to teach his children how to keep cattle, how to take care of his wealth. He was so busy, he and a faithful servant. He did not need to do this because there was someone, and that is the same like us. We are Labans in this meeting. We don't bother teaching our people what to do. Mustiana Yako, I have no daughter, but let me talk about yours. <laughs> As I enjoy kupika chapati, anajua, na ako university. Si hapa watu wako na watu wako university. Ajui, eh? Lakini you are house servant. Yule mtoto ya sister yako ule mkubwa ule uliko na eka na e. Ndiyo ukuwa unataka aende, you did not want her to leave you. Because she knew everything although she was younger than your daughter. You don't teach them. You are a great physician. You are a great businessman. But you don't take time to do it, but you teach others how to do it better than yourselves. So one day, you will be in a position of desperation, like Laban. And Laban is a great guy, by the way. Evangelists who are here, Musi Muchukwe, na muna muna semanga, he offered refuge to a son of his, of his sister. For many years, they lived together. There was no quarrels. It was okay. The chap was a faithful shepherd. He lived well, and he guarded his everything, and he was quite faithful to him as the as, as, as word goes on. And then, Laban, after he said, agreed, he says, let it be as you have said. That same day, when you are now in the morning, I believe it was in the morning. That same day, he removed all the male gods that were strict or spotted, and all the speckled, or the whatever female gods, all that had white on them, and all the dark colored lambs, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Is he doing something different from Laban? He did not place it in the care of his servants 
Although we read at the end of the day that he and many servants, he and many gods, he and many sheep, he and many camels, he and many donkeys when he was living. That now is the changing point of Jacob. And therefore today, I'm talking about value of a seed. Because I told you my message will not fall away from farming. Because I've done farming all through in life. Value of a what? A seed. I want to leave this to divert a little bit from what I am reading about, about uh, Jacob and Laban and say. A seed is a valuable thing. When you have a seed and you want to plant it in your fields, what you normally do, you start from something called bush clearing. Please, you know what is bush clearing? You remove all the boulders, all the stones, eh? Mahiga, you know, eh? Luanda. You remove all of them, all those stones, you remove them from your field and you cut the heavy trees. And after cutting them, you still dig out the roots because you have a what? You have a seed to come and plant here. I'm taking you through land preparation. And after that, then you take now what we call the real plowing. Actually, sometimes you start with a reaper. You get all the roots out, and then now you bring another plow to do plowing. And on. In real conventional farming, because I told you that I do these things, you have again after plowing come with a harrow. In Itangwa haru, in your language? In Itangwa haru, eh? in your language. So it passes through your land again to flatten the ground so that the seed does not fall in a, bag, in, in a rough place. For those who are really farmers, great farmers, there is another one which follows which is called a rotaveta. A rotaveta now smoothens the ground to be fine, fine tilled. And then after that, you carefully place it. Ukiangalia wana wafanyi kazi ya waifanyi mvizuri, you go all the way to mwea. Ama narok, ama wapi kuingine, you go yumboro a planta. Ndiyo pali yo seed inanguka, isikuwe kumekanyangwa na mguya mbinadamu. Clean surface. Now, when a seed is placed there, and God of heavens brings rains or you have irrigation system, it has no reason not to grow. And I went one time in a place called uh, Luandeti in, in, in Kakamega. And I asked an old woman, can you share with me some seeds of, of, uh, of mito? There is something called mito, a very good venture. Is, is there anybody saying yes around? Yes. Yeah, oh, great. God bless you wherever you are. And then this lady told me, I will go into my gala. The small traditional, she was really, young. she went and came with a gourd, cocked firmly. That gourd, I observed it, it was totally sealed, it could not at least let air inside. Akanitolea, akaniwekelea mbegu zangu, kwa a small gourd which she had also inside that gala. That is how precious seed is all about. Now, <laughs> let me tell you something. Your heart is a field. Is your heart full of boulders? Is your heart full of bushes? Do you know the great Lord has to do a lot of work in your heart before the seed is let inside that heart? If you know the granitic, the granite rocks, very hard to destroy. Many, they, it also forms a very good base for planting crops, but it has to be destroyed. It has to dis be dismantled. It has to be crushed and everything. It has no soil disease. And then that's where you plant your soil and feed it well. How is your heart looking like today? Ama wea umelima mara ya kwanza na ukapanda. Ama imekatakatwa miti na ukapanda. You've not prepared well for the seed to be planted inside that heart. And always you want it to grow. Every time there is a bush which is in a... There is, there is a plant which gives us very good honey called Acacia mellifera. Kila wakati inakunguza ikikupulu, inaitu angoja kidogo. So, 
maybe it is full of that when ndiye watu wakipitia karibu na wao na wakamata anaenda akisema mwao usiwe he speaks really you know like that what kind of a person is your heart every one of us now in the real living we have a seed i do not know who is your laban hii mshahara unapatanga kila mwisho wa mwezi ni mbegu ni mbegu is a seed stop eating seeds wacha kula mshahara eh hiyo ni mbegu even now when i'm talking there is someone here who is living to go and squander the salary ni mbegu huyo mama kama angekula singepata mbegu ya mito but i have Unaona? So stop eating seeds. And the word do not give me anything when it comes to the time of living where you are living. It is the one that you use to cushion your life. You are not born brother and sister. You are not born to to slave, you know, to 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 pay bills until you die. You know? Si kuna bill unalipa hiyo loan ya nini? One thing we are taught about here is there is a time to say no I must move on I must go on and and decision is meant in uh, the, the the in in the next uh, statement the, the the decision of Genesis that 1 verse 1 to 7 which I can quickly just go and then you know we we pick it up Jacob had Laban sons na hii wakati itafika ikiwa injafika We are saying Jacob has taken everything out of our father owned and gained all his wealth from his be- what belonged to our father and Jacob noticed that La- ja- Laban's attitude towards him and changed it's getting late now it's the sixth year it's getting late here Jacob must make his decisions because wameanza kuona ametajirika but he forgot that he found Laban's with very small herd of cattle and from there he prospered to become big he knew the value of a seed his seed was his wages he starts from his wages and gets the wages did you see did you hear that he killed one go to eat he never killed one he took all of them and between him and the laban's herd he kept a three day journey a three day journey from here is where ngombe za laban na mbuzi ziko pale akachukua zake he went three days far away from labans and that tells me something because that those are the quick lessons i wanted us to pick when you start something for yourself and you are working as a farmer like i am do not start farming next gate of your employer umesikia anza mbali ikiwa wewe you are attending an mpesa shop do not start it next to his you must separate your stock and do it the right place your stock must also be different from what your employer has his was clear it was spotted it was speckled the dark headed lamps and all this kind of thing it was separate the distance must be clear to you you must entrust what you have separated from my employer na mumeketi chini na mkakumbaliana hii ndio yangu my wages which you have worked for unaona hiyo hana swali na eh that is yours that is what you are going to do but again also entrust that with people that you can trust jacob chose who his sons enda mkakae huko mkae na mali yangu he knew the value of a seed na niliwaambia hizo mbuzi za laban they were not many they, they were not many with your they were few and do not forget to do these things secretly unajua kuna hii site tunakaanga ya wanaume sometimes you may want to surprise your beloved one but then you end up surprising yourself call them na ninaona you can see as we go down the text text verse 4 of that one says so jacob said i want to rachel and leah sio ni watu wake na wakaketi chini na wakaongea na wakazungumza na wakakumbaliana na wakasema na wakakumbaliana na now then in verse 14 he said then rachel and leah replied after he explained to them zile shinda amepitia kwa baba yao he actually was telling see your father has cheated me by changing my wages 10 times however god has not allowed him to harm me 
your employer and you kumaliza. See, by the way, Iko. Yeah? Although I should be speaking this, I think, in the, in the, in the parliament. Because Musha Pitia Yoyot. Situliamfeo kitu kama hiyo. Your employer has delayed it to get the most out of you. And then after that, he agrees with them. And I, then I see number 14. Then Leah, Rachel and Leah replied, Do we still have any share in the inheritance of our father's estate? See what my are. And then they go ahead and they say, Does he regard us as foreigners? Not only has he sold us, but he has used up what was paid for us. Surely, all the wealth that God took away from the Father belongs to us and our children. So, do whatever God tells you to do. Yo, wakati ukifika, akunanga wakati. Umakumbaliana watu wako? Eh, chenye tutapata njiani, tumakumbaliana, it is okay for us? Yes, then we are going. You make firm decisions, but make good use of your seed. And as I have said, you were not born to pay bills and die. Apana, my brother, aiko na munayo, you were not born for that. Uwa tu weo kazi yako ni kulipa mbili. Ukitoka hivi wanatokea, wanakuambia, kuna kitu inaitangwa top up. Wanakuongeza laba ni mungine. You know, it should not be like that. So you keep working for that for all the days of your life. Na ile ulipata wakati ule, half of it, ulianda kununuwa nguwe ingine. Hawa kutumia vizuri. You must learn to be patient. That is another thing I want to tell you. Results happen over time. They do not happen overnight. A farmer, when he puts the seed after that long preparation, has to wait until it gives you, it gives for the fruit. And one seed recovers multitudes of other seeds. Protect and guard your seed. If you are not able to invest it today, invest that seed Gather, continue gathering and accumulating like this Laban we are seeing until you have enough. Hard time teach you valuable things. So you must pass there. I said about the scorching heat of the Middle East on the head of Jacob. If you cannot manage stress then, you will never manage success. Whatever you are going through, Every morning, like Monday, tomorrow, you are worried about how you are going to deal with, with a situation that is uh, ahead of you. Some of you have serious issues that they have to tend to, and you don't know where to begin with because the quarrels of last week might have landed you into problems with your boss. Or your client, or your supplier, or whatever you did. You know, <laughs> this age now you are experienced. How many of you... Uh, have utilized because I know you are there. How many of you, when you have had an issue with the police on the roadside or KRA, rare names which are mentioned here, or KRA, you felt like invoking Matthew chapter 5, verse 25? What does that verse say? Can I read for you today? Work up a screen. This time I read it from there. How many, did you do that yesterday? I think you did. Please, work up a screen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 25. We are coming to the end. Work up. Tutangoja mpaka wa itoe. Si tutangoja? Eh, watoe iyo, iyo. Matthew chapter 5, verse 25. Imepotea? Iko. Or I go back to my Bible. Let me search for it then. If they cannot find it, we need to find it. Together. Kwa nini ya itokelese yi kwa screen na ninataka mosome? Nini wenyeo? Imetokea? What is that saying? Is it what you did yesterday or the other day? Mulijua hii vasi iko? You know it was there? Munachaka nini? Kwani ya musomangi biblia? Hii watu. How many were you doing like that? The other day. Mulisi, eh, my brother. Eh, 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 eh. 
Hii inakuanga shida ya protecting seed. Be careful what you do. And you have to know Christ was not buried by poor men. You must invest to have something that you can do good business. The body of Jesus Christ was done by two men. And one of them was a great leader then, Simon. Mulisikia we mzee? It's a great leader. And he invited his own core businessman who was equally rich, who was called Nicodemus. In fact, Nicodemus came with a spice, which was mar mixed with aloe. Its value today of what Nicodemus gave of 30 kilograms is equivalent to 30 million Kenya shillings. That was the body of Christ. Because I know mar, I know aloe, I'm a farmer, I have grown them both. That was the value of what he actually delivered for the body of Christ. And at the same time, you know what Simon gave. He actually took the body. He is, I would say, he they took mercy on the body of Christ, contrast to the Jesus friends who were hiding. I always call this man the disciples designate of Christ. So, sukua namna yo, kila wakati ni WhatsApp. Guard your seed. Take care of your seed. From the seed that goes into your heart. If you sow bitterness, you will reap something. If you saw, if you saw evil inside your heart, you will reap quite. It multiplies. So if you saw hatred, your mother-in-law, yeah, you will reap massive from that field of your heart. If you, if you saw a hatred, you will reap lots of it inside your heart. Lakini ukipanda wema, a lot of that will come your way. There is no one who plants maize, and in that maize field, he is going to harvest mangoes. It is you to plant a mango and wait for it, because we said we must have patience, all the way to the end. Once you have your seed, and then you are ready to plant. By the way, uh, you know, after a very important function, and Emmanuel, kuja hapa na ile notebook yako. You see, after, kuja, you know, ulikuja nae? Do you have the notebook? Good, come. You know, after he went through a certain process, uh, he, I gave uh, him a Bible. We were sitting on the fireplace after we did our God. And I told him, I gave him a Bible and told you, you know what? Heed to the instructions of the Lord. And read this word every day. And there was a notebook. Is it the same notebook? And, and every, every time he writes the scripture of what he read that particular day inside there. Just the way when they are in Sunday school, every time I talk and I say, pal and I'm Lisa, Leo, mumeso manini. And then I'm taken through, last week I know they read about repentance. What was that teacher called? Teacher uh, Eunice. Good. They read about repentance, so I still remember. But when I was going through, he's checking his notebook, I realized uh, it was 16th of, was it 16th of May? Yeah, read to this, to, to my good friends. According to the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 19, the Bible says, Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. Read to, give me in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12, and then I go to sit down. You know, before it comes, because I'm realizing it's taking time, what, in the, another meeting, we was not a meeting, but just by the fireplace. We talk a lot on that fireplace, a lot of fun. Do you know what Caleb told me? You, you know, you have seen him on the screen. He told me, unajua tulikuwa tunajitaharishia kufanya mutiani ya physics. There are many, there are 2,000 boys in that school. And then, uh -huh, and then I say, Sasa, nimesema, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. And then he told me, Ni ule wakati unasikia ikiingia ukisoma, because physics, paper two, si mchezo. So we were really, kila mutu wa Do you know what is a boy's school? 
I schooled in a school of boys' school, a day school, which had a gate but did not have a fence. Did you go? Did you, did you go? Yeah. Were you in a school like that one? It had a gate but did not have a what? Now we faithfully followed the gate. He told me while they were preparing for V6, and it really, from the day when I'm the motto, then they were preparing. Then another boy comes out, and there are many boys. They pass, and a pitia kwa dirisha apu akitoka, wanaendanga chua sana during that time. We said, yeah, I don't know why. And then, I don't know why it, it, we did that too. And then when he's going there, haka ingisa kichwa kwa dirisha yao, kilasi yao, kachia, utavu na uli. And what? <laughs> Some could not perform that. They came out and chased the boy away because, but actually, the boy was telling them something. Yeah? Was it like that? Give us Deuteronomy 28. The Lord will send rain at the proper time for his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. In actual fact, my Deuteronomy says like this. The Lord will open the heavens the storehouse of his bounty. To send rain over your land, your own land, okay? You, and to bless all the work of your hands. My brother, my sister, you must have work in your hands. Something to be blessed. See ya mwingine, wachana na ima neno ya kupossess land cruisers na Volkswagen za watu kwa mbarabara. I possess. Una possess na mna gani? Uwe njamaa alifanya kazi? Weka kitu kwa mikono yako na uambie mungu ndiyo hii nimeleta kama Musa. Sindio? I am only holding a stick. Hii ndiyo niko nayo nimbariki nae. Ya? Yeah? Uko na license kapla hata unjaanza kuandimaya is a Volkswagen or Mercedes Benz. You've not even driving license to tell God I do have one here with myself. I don't know where to use it. God, help me. Then he can work from that license. He will bless the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations. But you will borrow from none. Do you know why you are borrowing? You borrow from none. I will make your head and not a tail. This God is the one who is talking to us. That today... He will prosper you as long as you guard, you understand the seed you have and everything. He will guard that for you. He will guard your heart because there is a seed there of life. No, no. Sasa, si mwache ni malizia hapo alafu ni rudi tu kwa mbaki bejam because they are missing my presence down there. Kuja wambei watu, pastor. Pastor. 